There's the Orlando Arena, which is the host site for this SEC tournament. They've seen great basketball all weekend. And earlier today, the Ole Miss Rebels came from behind to beat the Vanderbilt Commodores 65-62. For their final thoughts on the game, here are the announcers, Marty Brenneman and Larry Conley. Larry, we posed a question yesterday when this tournament got underway, at least a quarterfinal round, could possibly some of the magic from the nearby Magic Kingdom rub off on one of these clubs. I guess... Uh, to some large extent, we know which club it is right now. Well, you know, Marty, before Ed Murphy came on the air with me, we were standing there talking about the game. He says, it wasn't very pretty. And he says, we really didn't play very well for about 38 minutes. But he said, the last two minutes really belonged to us. And he was right. right. They really did take over the last two minutes. But it's a basketball game that I think put Mississippi into a championship game. That at the beginning of the season, and I said something to him in this question when I was standing there with him, I said, you know, a lot of expectations were, were high in your area, in the state of Mississippi, about your club this year. And it really didn't come about, but the season was difficult. And now you've got a chance to redeem yourself by going to the NCAA championship. And I said, that's got to make you feel awfully good. He says it does. Let's take a look at the final numbers in this ball game. One by Ole Miss by three, 65-62. And again, Vanderbilt shooting 38%. Ole Miss really raised the level of their shooting in the second half to get to that 45% level. The free throw shooting right now, you take a look at Vanderbilt, 14 of 19, 7 of 10 for Ole Miss. The three-point shooting really hit big in the last four minutes of that basketball game. You know, it never ceases to thrill me, and not uh, really making any difference which sport you're talking about. When you talk about superstars or great players, and see them stand up and be counted when it gets down to crunch time, hey, Gerald Glass did it today. Well, he did, and he brought it on right when they needed to have it, and he did it with his three-point shooting and his passing. We talked about a lot, of that, a lot of that in the second half. He's a player and a complete player who gives you every facet of his game when he's out there. If he's not scoring, he'll do it in passing, he can do it in rebounding. He's just a great player. That he is. Larry, it's been great working with you Thank again, you. with Bob you. Weldlick, with Tom Hammond and all this great crew from Jefferson Pilot. Uh, it's been a great tournament so far with some great basketball still to come. Bob Kessling, great working with you and back to you. Okay, Marty, thanks very much. Ole Miss marches on yesterday. Ole Miss, of course, beat Tennessee 87-86 today. They win again as Ole Miss knocks off Vanderbilt 65-62. The other semifinal game is coming up. Auburn and Alabama and will continue from the Orlando Arena in just a moment. Big weekend of basketball, of course, here in Orlando. It's the SEC tournament where Ole Miss has won against Vanderbilt 65-62. Other tournaments going on around the country at the present time. As a matter of fact, the ACC tournament's going on right now. Clemson and Virginia battling in that matchup. Uh, North Carolina was knocked out yesterday by Virginia. And in the other bracket, Duke is going up against Georgia Tech. And, of course, uh, all the four of those teams will probably be going to the NCAA tournament. Here uh, is... We move along some other scores. Virginia has or is winning against Clemson right now. A 57-52. That would be an upset if the Cavaliers can continue. And in the Metro Tournament, uh, Louisville won against Memphis State. Cincinnati against Southern Mississippi in another bracket. So uh, the uh, Southern Miss team won last night. Louisville and Southern Mississippi battling for the Metro Conference Championship. Of course, the big thing is tomorrow, the NCAA brackets will be announced for both men and women coming up. Here's the Metro score. Louisville on top of Southern Miss in the second half, 71 to 64. Again, we'll keep you uh, totally uh, controlled and also totally covered with all the college basketball going on this afternoon. But our main focus coming up now is the contest and the SEC between Auburn and Alabama. Your first semifinal final score, the Ole Miss Rebels have knocked off the Vanderbilt Commodores 65 to 62. The Tigers and the Crimson Tide coming up next. The winner going on to beat Ole Miss and the SEC finals tomorrow. After, we'll be back after these messages from your local SEC stations. The Ole Miss Rebels are in the finals. Auburn and Alabama trying to win their way tomorrow afternoon here at the Orlando Arena. Auburn and Alabama have met twice before this year, and the Alabama Crimson Tide has won both of those matchups. The third meeting is coming up now as the Alabama Crimson Tide go up against the Auburn Tigers. This is Bob Kessling at the arena. Second game coming up. Tommy Joe Eagles, the Auburn Tigers have become classic overachievers, and yesterday against LSU, they pulled one of the shocking upsets of the college season. Auburn's only senior, Derek Dennison, jammed in 34 points as the Tigers clawed from 17 down to set up this improbable game-winning three-pointer by John Kaler. The 
courageous young Auburn team made the SEC tourney semifinals over LSU by two. The only favorite to escape the tournament upset jinx was Wimp Sanderson's Alabama team, which carved up Mississippi State by 15. Bama's powerful front line was potent. Melvin Cheatham had 15 points and 11 rebounds. Robert Ory shot for 14. David Benoit collected 13 points. And the Crimson Tide also turned up its suffocating defense to roll to the easy victory. Today, these two bitter rivals, Auburn and Alabama, David and Goliath, battle once again as our Pepsi coverage of the SEC tournament continues. JP Sports presents the best in regional college basketball, the Southeastern Conference. The Pepsi SEC Game of the Week is brought to you by Pepsi-Cola and your local Pepsi bottler. By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. For insurance and financial services, better call JP. By Bud Light, everything else is just a light. By Delta, the airline of SEC country. We love to fly, and it shows. By Lowe's, America's number one lumber and building material store. By Buick and your Buick dealer. The great American road belongs to Buick. By Gulf and BP, makers of high-octane, high-performance gasoline. And by AT&T, the right choice. Of Auburn against the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Welcome back to the Orlando Arena. Tom Hammond and Bob Weltlake ready to bring you this second semifinal game. Auburn and Alabama, two fierce rivals to uh, earn a spot in the finals, as improbable as it might seem, against the Ole Miss Rebels. A couple of questions come to mind immediately, Bob. Auburn, one of the real underdogs in this tournament, knocked off a heavyweight LSU yesterday. Did they spend all their emotion in that come-from-behind victory? Well, we're going to find out very quickly, but I think they'll come in here and play very relaxed today. Even though it's a big rival, you know, it's a game where nobody expected them to be here. Tough game, and yet a game that I know they're looking forward to because Alabama's taken them twice, and that doesn't sit well with the Auburn Tigers. Alabama didn't have much trouble with Mississippi State. They won by 15, but they played until after midnight. Will they be tired this afternoon? Well, I think to a degree, but they really didn't have a difficult game. The game was over at halftime, and their defense once again prevailed. I think if there's an advantage in the game, it would simply be that Alabama plays good defense, and as you play down the road, your legs get a little bit tired, you don't shoot it as well, defense becomes a constant and they have proven through the course of the season they're the best of that in the league. And a contrast in offensive strengths, Auburn better on the perimeter, Alabama goes inside. Make for a great matchup. All the scoring on the perimeter for, for Auburn. On the other hand, the big three inside for Alabama. Great matchup, contrasting style. The winner of the game moves on to the finals and moves a step closer to the NCAA tournament. We'll have the starting lineups in just a moment. SEC tourney semifinals, the Auburn Tigers, 13 and 17 overall, the number six seed in this tournament against Alabama, the second seed with a record of 22 and eight. Time now for AC Delco starting lineups. Let's go to public address announcer, Marty Stone. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Orlando Arena for the second semifinal game of the Southeastern Conference Basketball Tournament between the Auburn University Tigers and the University of Alabama Crimson Tide. Now introducing the starting lineup for Auburn. At forward, a 6'3 senior from Atlanta, Georgia, number 24, Derek Dennison. At forward, a 6'6 sophomore from Auburn, Alabama, number 44, Chris Brent. At center, a 6'6 junior from Birmingham, Alabama, number 40, Zane Arnold. At guard, a 5'10 freshman from Miami, Florida, number 14, Reggie Gallon. And at 
guard, a 6'1 freshman from Fitzhugh, Alabama, number 21, Ronnie Battle. And the head coach for the Tigers, Tommy Joe Eagles. And now the starters for Alabama. At forward, a 6'8 junior from Winsboro, Louisiana, number 44, Melvin Cheatham. At forward, a 6'9 sophomore from Andalusia, Alabama, number 25, Robert Ory. At center, a 6'8 senior from Lafayette, Louisiana, number 30, David Benoit. At guard, a 6'2 senior from Ensley, Alabama, number 14, James Sanders. And at guard, a 6'2 junior from Decatur, Georgia, number 12, Gary Waits. And the head coach for the Crimson Tide, Whip Sanderson. And there's a look at our AC Delco starting lineup. AC Delco, automotive parts that don't just fit, they match. Already the Ole Miss Rebels have gained the SEC Tournament Finals. It'll either be Auburn or Alabama. That game's tip-off coming up. Auburn against Alabama in the Southeastern Conference Tournament Semifinals from Orlando. Here are the officials for this afternoon's game. Don Rutledge on the left, Max Chauvin in the center, Ali Prescott on the right. Alabama has a 58-39 lead in the series with Auburn and also leading in tournament meetings. During the regular season, the Crimson Tide swept both meetings with the Tigers, winning in Tuscaloosa 78-59 and 80-65 in Auburn. It'll be Cheetah Mori, Benoit, Waits, and Sanders for the Tide. The Tigers with Dennison, Brant, Arnold, Battle, and Gallup. And Alabama controls the opening tap. We'll see both man-to-man, -man, both teams using basic man-to-man, -man, very similar philosophies, passing game, good man-to-man -man defense. Last night, Alabama's defense on Mississippi State was suffocating. They just really controlled the game with that D. It's hard to believe that you can have 17 halves of basketball this year where you give the opponent less than 25 points a game, but that's what Alabama has done, and that's been their benchmark all season long. And on this end of the court, they like to go to their inside trio, Benoit, Cheatham, and Ori. Down to 10 seconds on the shot clock, and they'll go outside to wait. No good, but Sanders saves it for Bama. The guard in there rebounding, but he stepped out of bounds. Well, it'll be interesting to see if Alabama's guard woes continue. That will probably be a key as Auburn drops back in. And here we see, of course, the Alabama man defense. Alabama allowing only 61.9 points a game. One of the best defensive teams in all of college basketball. Now we have a good matchup early. We're going to see Cheatham on Derek Dennison, who had the big game yesterday for Auburn. And, of course, down here we have Sanders, who is the best backcourt defensive player guarding battle. Zane Arnold of Auburn is called for setting an illegal pick. So the first foul of the game is called away from the basketball on Zane Arnold of Auburn. Alabama fans, the students keep the chant up until they make their first basket, and right now they have gone a minute and a half almost. There's a foul on Auburn. That basket went in but doesn't count. The fans keep up the chant. you got to hope that's a shooting foul, and it isn't. So here we go some more. <laughs> that foul was on Derek Dennison. There's, a, there's an illegal screen on Alabama. Well, I'll tell you, Don Rutledge has made two calls, and I think it's very easy to figure out that they are not going to allow a lot of pushing and shoving and screening. There will be no illegal screen set today. <laughs> At least one TC. <laughs> Derek Dennison, he was hot yesterday, forced that when it wouldn't go, and Ben Wise the rebound. Still a scoreless game through the first minute 40. Well, one thing Alabama does is they do more than you think, and that is they will push the break. Their biggest problem has been that they've not been able to finalize the break. Knocked out of Ori's hand and out of bounds. The student chant continues, but growing weaker by the minute. They're looking always to get the easy basket, but as so many times happens to be the case, they're not able to, so they have great patience in their half-court offense. Ori 
Finally gives the fans a break and scores the first two of the game. Robert Ory, who had 14 against Mississippi State last night and has had 20 games in double figures this season. All but 10 of Alabama's outings. Well, they're just so solid defensively, and of course they have people in there. Nice move by Brandt, but they have good shot blockers. They're very good athletically. Uh, they're quick to the ball. They create a lot of problems for you, and here we see Auburn with a little bit of token pressure on a full-court basis. There's Brandt for Auburn getting their first points inside. Here's Sanders. Good penetration. He laid it in. Got right away from battle. Talking to Wimp Sanderson, if their guards will do and take what the defense gives them, they can be very effective. It's when all of a sudden they decide to create the shot off the dribble from 18 feet that they get into trouble. Dennison finds Brandt again, stripped by weight. Sanders saves it. Out of bounds. Who hit it last? Brandt of Auburn. Well, it's a good call by the official. This is just a case of good quick hands. You see the feet in here. They shake the ball loose. Waite shakes it loose. The save by Sanders, and Brandt touches it. It goes out of bounds. Alabama with a 4-2 lead in the basketball. Melvin Cheatham shot won't go. A little 5-10 half gallon in there for the rebound. Derek Dennison. Over to Battle. Three-point shot is good by Ronnie Battle, who hits about 39% from that range. Boy, he's a good-looking freshman, and that's a great start for him. I know Tommy Joe Eagles wants him to get out of the blocks very quickly, and that three-pointer's got to help his confidence. Each team hitting two of its first four shots. Turnaround, Ori, no good. Brandt clears it. Gallon up court. Auburn with the ball up one. Stripped away from Gallon. Loose on the floor to Benoit. Second turnover by the Tigers. I think what will be interesting to see as the game develops is the bench play because Alabama has figured out a way to develop more bench play, which will be important. Auburn's a little bit limited. You've got Kaler, and then it really drops off from there. Had it out of bounds. Last touch by Auburn. I think the emergence of Marcus Webb will be very key for Alabama. Timeout was 16.03 left in the first half. Ronnie Battle lighting it up from three-point range to give Auburn a one-point lead. It's 5-4, Tigers over the Crimson Tide. Auburn with an early lead on Alabama, 5-4 at the 16-03 mark. In the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament underway in Charlotte, the Virginia Cavaliers have whipped Clemson 69-66. The upsets continue in the Metro. Louisville wins the Metro Championship. And Regular season and tournament, they'll be heading to the NCAA after a three-point victory over Southern Miss. Terry Holland going out with a bang at Virginia. Doesn't want to give it up, does he? Nope. They beat North Carolina yesterday. They whipped Clemson today. Cheatham stripped away from Dennison who commits his second foul. I alluded to this earlier, but we look at yesterday's games. You have four players from Auburn that had to go 30 or more minutes, whereas Alabama only had one that did. And so what we have is a situation as the game plays out, although Alabama played late to see how well Auburn holds up under the Alabama pressure. Here's the hero of yesterday's win over LSU, John Kaler, who hit a three-pointer at the buzzer to pull the Tigers from one point down to a two-point victory. Derek Dennison sits down after committing his second foul. Well, unfortunately, and I know Tommy Joe Eagles is talking to the official, there are two fouls that really... You know, you get a block foul and a reach foul, and they're both kind of nitpicky, but they are fouls. But it really hurts you when your best player has to sit down early, or at least the player who's playing the best in the tournament for you. Melvin Cheatham had 15 points, 11 rebounds last night, and he gives Alabama the lead. Here comes the press. And Auburn beats it handily. Arnold lays it in. Excellent job, but a good look by Alabama. You take out a perimeter guy, bring in an inside guy. Alabama immediately went to the press to see how well they would handle it. Tigers regain the lead, 7-6 Auburn. That's a mismatch in there. Need him over Brandt, it won't go though. Gallon has his second rebound. Quickly finds Brandt, they beat him down the court, but Ori saves the day by knocking it out of bounds. Well, this is just a great move here at the completion of the, of the press. Arnold spins, banks, I'm not sure he was playing the bank, but a great play to get the ball to complete the play. 
Inbound pass is tipped and stolen by Gary Waits of Bama. He leads a three-on-three -three break to the hoop. No good. Taylor on the rebound for Auburn. Alabama's missed their last four. They trail by one. It's going to heat up here. There's just, you know, it's going to be just a little. You can, you can tell there's some animosity, as there always is. But the Auburn kids have been whipped twice, and they're not about to give this enough with a fight without a fight. Reggie Gallon falling away from Waits won't go. Ori has the rebound. Bama the other way, looking to regain the lead. Excellent look. Cheatham has fouled a great pass from Gary Waits. Don't know how he saw him. Don't know how he saw him. He was blocked out by a defensive player. Everything was moving to the right, came back to the left. This is just a great pass and a very difficult pass to handle as all long bounce passes are. Cheatham concentrates on it and gets the ball up on the glass into the free throw line. Boy, Waits with that beautiful bounce pass through traffic and it caught Cheatham right in stride. Well, we talked about they'll look for it if it's available and that puts pressure on you because people think, hey, Alabama is a half-court team. Not true if the opportunity presents itself. Melvin Cheatham on the coaches All-SEC team this season in double figures 26 of the Tide's 30 games. Leading score. Leading rebounder, Alabama's now hit three of four at the free throw line, all by Cheatham, and Auburn has not attempted a free throw. Tied at seven. Sanders really doing a good job of bothering Battle and making it difficult for him to catch the ball in his normal shooting range. Battle got away that time and scored in the paint. No help inside, good individual move by Battle. Three-point shot. James Sanders with his fifth point. He leads Alabama in scoring. Just two below his seasonal average already in the first four minutes of the game. Big part in playing good defense, just simply you don't have to necessarily deny the ball or pressure the ball as much as you need to force people to catch the ball in locations where they're not comfortable. A low post player in the high post, a 12-foot jump shooter at the 18-foot range, that's good defense. Keith Askins replaces Gary Waits. Askins, 6'6", six, six senior from Athens, Alabama. Averages in double figures, though he comes off the bench. 10 points and five rebounds a game. He was a starter the beginning of the 89 season. Started the first 13 games, but Wimp Sanderson discovered that he got more production from him off the bench, and he's been the super sub ever since. In fact, what a big tournament he had last year. He set or tied a championship game record last season with five three-point shots and made the all-tournament team. Arnold's shot is too hard and Cheatham rebounds for Bama. Well, Askins and, and, and Webb just give them, I think, a tremendous advantage because it gives them a player that can play at, at every spot. Grant on the arm of Cheatham has his second foul and Auburn has Two starters now with a couple of fouls here in the first half. Dennison on the bench with two. Now Brant picking up his second. Alabama's committed only one foul. That's the fifth against Auburn. Well, you know, you're sitting there, you're Tommy Joe Eagles, and you're saying this is the best, most aggressive defensive team in the league, and they're shooting all the free throws. What's the deal? But Alabama just does a good job of playing position defense, moving their feet, and making good decisions. So, I mean... It's been a well-officiated game. They're just playing well. Whip already has the tie loosened. He's ready for action. I guess anytime it's Auburn, you better be ready. Benoit rebounds the miss by Cheatham. So Bama gets another chance. Auburn can't allow that. Alabama leads by two. Benoit posting strong inside. He scores. I'll tell you, you take that front line of Alabama, wouldn't you like to have a track team with those guys? I mean, they just all look like they could do everything. Run, jump, whatever. I mean, just great looking athletes. Like Greyhound. Whew. Benoit had a career high of 24 points against Auburn in the meeting in Auburn during the regular season. That's his first two of this game. Ronnie Battle, too hard off the glass. Benoit clears a rebound. Here's Sanders leading the break. And Good move. away by Gallon. Gallon hurries it all the way. Sanders fouling. Gallon, I think Gallon got so preoccupied with his steps that he really did not explode to the basket. And I'll tell you, against these guys, you better be hauling. 
Here we see it, and you'll see Gallon short dribbles the ball. And is looking over his shoulder and all of a sudden accelerates to the basket, but it's too late. Pretty good move on the glass there by Sanders. I see why he's upset. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, he had anything but ball, and you heard the ooh from the crowd as they watched the uh, replay on the scoreboard here at the Orlando Arena. Gallon bricks that free throw. Here we see it again, and there's Sanders. Mm, that's not going to help the officials when that goes up in the viewer. Gallon rolls in the second free throw, his first point. And it's a three-point Alabama lead. There's a foul on Gallon. That'll be his first, but six now against Auburn. Foul is on number 14 for Auburn. Richie Gallon, his first, team six. Calling it closer than I think they've called it through the three, previous three or four games in that uh, they're just trying to, I think they sense the rivalry and that the guys are a little bit tired and tempers might be run a little bit short. So they're trying to keep it under good control. Benoit and Arnold going at it in the post. Out of bounds, Benoit touched it last. Well, I'll tell you what, they are going at it in the post. I mean, everybody that's posted, it's been a war. We've got a timeout, 12.07 left in the first half. Bama by three. The Auburn mascot, 13-10, his team on the short end of the score, while the men in plaid, the Alabama band. What about Wimp's coat today? We've checked it out. He's got the bright plaid on today. No subdued colors for this uh, Auburn rivalry. I promise you that he did not lose a game in that coat today if it's in his wardrobe here. Not that he's superstitious. <laughs> oh, no. There's a shooting so far. Auburn at 40%. Bama just a little better, 44. Tough matchup for Battle. Askins is so much bigger. And he is as quick as he is, it'll be tough for Battle to get shots over him. It's nice to have a guy like that that can shut people down. He can play anybody. He can play the guards. He can play the forwards. Battle fires a quick one and got it. Two-point shot. Ronnie Battle has been the bulk of the Auburn offense. He has seven points. Yes, I called that one right. <laughs> Derek Dennison, who had 34 against LSU in early foul trouble, he hasn't scored. And is currently on the bench. There's a three-pointer by Robert Ory. That should not be a surprise. Their best shooters are their inside players, and all three of those guys can step up the top of the key and knock that shot down. In fact, Ory hits 40% from three-point range. By contrast, Waits at 33, Sanders at 26, the guard. Alabama's hit two of three three-pointers. Auburn one of one. But they what they do so well is when you pick up the ball, they swarm and shut down passing lanes. They play position, but you kill the dribble, and they really jump on you. Battle blocked by Askins. Battle got it back. Ori made a swipe at it. Somebody's got to be open, but they can't find it. Richard Smith is in the game for Auburn. 6'6", junior out of Chicago, Illinois, getting some playing time, which is a bit unusual. But Auburn has some foul difficulties up front. Gallon tried to dish it inside to uh, Zane Arnold and the quick hands of that Alabama defense. Benoit swiped it away. They're just having real trouble getting into their offense. And standing around a little bit. They're not crossing, not screening enough. Gallon shot too hard off the rim and out of bounds to Alabama. Nope, they say to Auburn. Now, well... Well, now Wimp is happy. It will go Bama's way. I think Wimp called that one. I think that's why he's really happy. He's got the striped jacket on, and the one official thought that Wimp was an official. Alabama's made three shots in a row. Sanders makes it four in a row. Anything they get out of that backcourt on plays like that has got to be a real bonus. And I think as these players play, and if they play well, they're going to gain confidence. Sanders is having a nice tournament. Here's another one of those illegal screens. This one set by Richard Smith, and that'll turn it over to Bama again. Here's a final from the Big East. Connecticut beating Georgetown, 65 to 60. Of course, we'll have all the scores for you coming up at halftime on our Budweiser scoreboard. Tommy Joe is, is uh, you just turn a little red, and you're starting to get some smoke around there, and I just, I, I just sense he's working on one right now, and uh, I, I, know, I know how he feels, you know, and he, he just, something will happen very quickly to try to get this thing turned around. 
not a happy camper at this point. There are some officials I know that would agree that you know how he feels. <laughs> Most of them maybe feel that way. That's why they would agree. Mm -hmm. Haskins in trouble, but he got it to Benoit, who lost it to Kaler. Kaler's long outlet pass to battle. Blocked by Haskins. Waits the other way. What he gives you gives you the big guy that can play people. They all can block shots. That front line, every one of them. Cheatham, 12-footer, a beauty. He's so soft. I mean, he just... and, and I really think Auburn's going to have to take a look at his own here pretty soon. I know they don't want to do that, but Alabama's just taking them apart inside. Blocks 4-0 in favor of the Crimson Tide. Battle is open. There's a three-pointer. Good. Great nope, job. Two. Must have had his foot on the line. A two-pointer, though. Great job of running the baseline. Well, the Alabama defense very active. Block shot there by Askins after Battle had the run out. Good call. I mean, Battle initiated all what little contact there was. Askins did a great job of staying off of him and got all ball. Alabama with the ball leading by six. Ronnie Battle keeping Auburn in the game with nine points. Collision, offensive foul, Robert Ory, and a really late call by Don Rutley. Oh, they're not going to be happy with that. And Taylor did a nice job of acting, and it was a late call. Right here, he turns. Does he try to go to the... No, he doesn't really try to go to the basket. He turns as if he's going to the baseline. Taylor gets away with a good acting job. Wimp's unhappy, but Tommy Joe Eagles has got to think I was due for one. Only the third foul against Alabama, as you saw. Here's Kaler posting up on Cheatham, and Cheatham with a push in the back has his second foul. Right now, what I think it is, is unfortunately it's a situation where both teams are having trouble getting a rhythm. And, and, and you know, not to be overly critical, but so much of that has to do with officiating. In, an, in that as you allow them to play and make a determination of what's acceptable, they get a better feel for the game. No, no real rhythm to the game right now. Larry Patrick in the game for Auburn, 6'5 junior from West Palm Beach, Florida. Dish inside to Arnold who gave it back. Fumbled around, Smith just couldn't handle it. Out of bounds, Auburn retains possession. See the 2-3 as we always do from Alabama in the inbounds situations. Very active inside and covering up anything that comes in and out of the lane. Gallon penetrates right off the leg of Arnold who wasn't ready for it. A tough play against the zone. Ori fires a three, yes! Under good pressure. Eight points for Robert Ori and Tommy Joe Eagles. Now has seen Alabama take a 23-14 lead. Alabama hit only two of its first seven shots. They've now reeled off six in a row. John Kaler inside, blocked and rejected out of bounds by Ori. Ori leads this Bama team in blocks, in fact did last season also. That's the fifth block shot for Alabama. We've got a timeout at the 744 mark. Here's another Bama rejection. This time, Robert Ory does the honors. His team up by nine. Alabama with a nine-point lead on Auburn. 23-14, 7.44 remaining in the opening half. And Alabama defense set a record last night. 29.5% shooting for Mississippi State. That's the lowest in SEC tournament history since the tournament's revival in 1979. Now, one of the problems, too, they're having is that the guys that played so well for Auburn yesterday, Dennison and Kaler, haven't scratched yet. So, I mean, it's tough enough playing without your best players playing well. And, of course, Dennison's on the bench in foul trouble. Auburn hit four of its first seven shots, now only two of its last eight. When the wing guy goes out on the 2-3 to guard, as you see Askins in and out, that opens up the baseline. When Ori comes out here, the baseline, if you step out on the baseline, you have a shot. Gallon's three rims off. Collared by Marcus Webb, who entered the game at the timeout. 6'8 sophomore from Montgomery. Askins, baseline move, a pretty one. I think they're going to have to take a look inside at the zone. I, I, just right now, it's just an overmatch. Alabama's... 
too quick, they're too explosive, they're catching the ball and going up over the Auburn defenders. Got to get it shut down inside and make them hit it on the perimeter. Boy, was that a shot in there. Alabama's made seven shots in a row. They have their biggest lead. Here's Marcus Webb with a push on Zane Arnold. Man, am I telling you what's going on inside there is nothing but nasty. There's some men playing in there. Here's the last possession, that baseline drive by Askins. Reggie Gallon takes it in play to battle. Now Auburn will set it up. Bama zoning the inbounds play. Patrick gets free for a baseline jumper. No good. And Askins tends it to weights the other way. Sanders got away and hit. Wow. Well, I tell you, it's getting a little bit too easy right now for Alabama. Auburn's got to do something to change the pace. You've got to look for some transition baskets, go to a different defense, but they've got to change the pace. Alabama's in a great rhythm. It's just too easy for them. Bama's hit eight shots in a row, now 67% from the field for the game. Arnold's shot won't go down, and here comes Bama trying to add to its lead. Good luck. Ori, and Bama finally misses after eight in a row. Ori and Taylor go down. Max Chauvin grabbed the arm of Robert Ori to keep him from smacking Taylor. Well, you can see what's going on inside. We're going to show you what's going on with Zane Arnold in here. You can see him posting up. I mean, there's two big bodies. I mean, they are pounding and pounding. The problem here is he does get a web gets away with a little bit of a push, but Arnold elects to shoot the ball going away. You've got to, if you're going to work that hard to get it, you've got to take it to the glass. David Benoit re-enters the Alabama lineup. Zones proved very effective for Alabama, and ironically enough, it's it's more a result of inbounds plays than by choice. Battles three is no good. There's Patrick all alone for the offensive board. He gets it down, and he's fouled. They needed that badly. This is one of the problems you have with the zone. A lack of blockout responsibilities. Nobody on the backside board because as the middleman moves over, you have to cover with a backside wing player. And Patrick comes in. And completes the three-point play, Larry Patrick. Oh, a little press, a little change of pace. Ten-point Alabama lead. Less than five and a half minutes remaining. Waits goes inside to Benoit, who's guarded by Taylor. Back outside to Sanders. Auburn is elected to play in behind the Alabama players in the post, and I just don't think that they can continue to do that. If they allow Alabama to handle the ball in there, then it becomes athletic quickness and jumping ability, and that favors Alabama. Benoit got away for the shot, and he rolled it through. Doing a great job of eliminating help side. Alabama is offensively by flashing that guy in the high post. That sets it up either in the low post or for the jump shot at the top of the key. Benoit is playing with a sprained little finger on yeah. his hand, but it didn't matter there. And a charging foul? No. It'll be Boy, on Waits just, of Alabama. What a shot. Taylor tried to set the screen. Waits said, hey, I've had all the screens. All I've had all the screens I'm going to take today. You'll see it coming here. Boom. I thought they might have called a Taylor for an illegal downfield block, but well, they got Waits. I tell you, the big uh, uh, Waits would have done a defensive back crowd on that one. Here's John Kaler as Waits picks up the foul. Kaler hit the winning shot against LSU yesterday. He also hit a three-pointer to beat Kentucky and Lexington back in 1988. He sat out all of last season as a medical red shirt after suffering a blood clot in his right shoulder. Now he takes a blood thinning medication and in the wake of the death of Hank Gathers of Loyola Marymount, he says that he's considering perhaps not coming back for his senior season. He just thinks it might be too risky to his health. A recurrence of the blood clot could be fatal if it occurred in a basketball game and lodged in his heart. And those kinds of things, you know, unfortunately, they happen and they bring things close to home. And I'm sure he's given it some real thought as he indicated, you know, as you mentioned. Haskins gets the roll. Boy, it seems like Alabama, every shot's going down for them, even when they don't hit dead center. 31-19, Crimson Tide. Well, there's no reason for them not to hit dead center because they are getting good shots. It's, it's no accident that they're scoring. They are getting good shots. 
Larry Patrick with his fifth point. You just, as you watch it, you know, all the Alabama shots, you know, are in that 12 foot uncontested range where all the Auburn shots are under pressure off one on one moves. And that's the reason we have the score that we have. Askins. There's another one. It is a good shot, as you mentioned, but Bama on fire after a slow start. They've hit 11 of their last 12 shots. They're just running a real simple move in there, and, and Auburn's not playing above it, and therefore the guys are coming wide open. Dane Arnold with an absolute brick. And Askins for three. No good. <laughs> Tommy Joe Eagles, where that shot was going up, he threw his arms up, it was like, oh, nah, don't tell me this is going in. Well, remember yesterday, Auburn came from 17 down to nip LSU at the wire. It'll be another uphill struggle for the Tigers if they can pull this one out. Big difference is Alabama's not playing like LSU has played over the last three or four games. Alabama's been on a roll. LSU, of course, came in lost two of their last three both to Auburn and Florida. But these guys, this, this Alabama group is tournament tough and they're here to win the whole thing. And there won't be any let up in this group. David Benoit commits his first foul. Fresh players in for the Auburn Tigers. Richard Gallon goes out to get a rest. Champ Wrencher will replace him at the point. And John Taylor also goes out as Richard Smith returns. Don't be surprised now to see Alabama cinch it up defensively. Wrencher is a guy who has not handled pressure particularly well. Of course, that's been well scouted and well documented. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised they go to the press or really start to squeeze the ball every time that Wrencher has it. Marcus Campbell clears the Bama rebound. Crimson tied with the ball and a 33-22 lead. Great hands in traffic. Foul on Richard Smith as he tried to prevent Askins from catching the ball right in that spot where he's hit about two in a row. Well, with the, they've got a stack working down there, and you're lining up Askins as the low man in the stack. And Auburn has elected to line up on the side instead of a man above. So all he's doing is just looping up the lane. And the Auburn players are actually screening each other, which is freeing him open as he comes up the lane. Ori replaces Campbell, and Reggie Gallon is back for Auburn. He's got Wrencher and uh, Gallon, his two-point guards, on the floor at the same time now. Perhaps a little quickness will do the trick. Askins can't hit it, but Ori saved it. And a three-point shot. Robert Ori with his 11th point. Boy, you know why that Alabama staff is excited about that sophomore. He, can, he has the whole package. It's just a case of him temperamentally keeping it all in perspective. Great inside post play. Ori was on the third team all this. Oh! Gracious. Patrick colliding with Ori there, and Patrick appears to be injured. He took a hard fall oh, after man. the play was already over. Oh, that's one of those where, I mean, the floor shook even where we're sitting. That was, that was unbelievable there, that collision. Good close play by Zane Arnold, and, and it's just one of those where it, it's accidental. Oh, man, that hurts to watch it. Woo! Broke his fall a little bit with his arms, but hit hard on his hip. Oh. Here we see it again. Ori just got pushed out, didn't even know he was there. Patrick's coming in on the weak side board, and we're talking hip pointer on that one. Yowie. Patrick shaken up, but apparently not seriously injured, and Tommy Joe Eagles came out to check on him, and at the same time had a few choice words for the officials. You get those, you get those shots in when you get a chance, and if they give you a freebie out on the floor to attend to a player, you, you can bet coaches aren't going to pass that up. Checking in for Ronnie Battle comes in to replace Patrick. And Tommy Joe still giving that Replacing withering Benoit. glare at the officials. There's Battle who has nine points leading Auburn so far. He's their leading score on the season at 17 a game. It's always an adventure when Zane Arnold goes to the free throw line. He gets around 58%. He's one of three today. He's worked really hard for him in the post. So he's got the one guy that's really squaring up in there and making an accounting for himself. And Arnold's free throw makes it a 13-point game with 2.16 left in the first half.
This half of SEC tournament action is brought to you in part by Apple Computer, the power to be your best. 36-23, the Alabama lead, 2-16 left in the first half. Alabama has led virtually the entire way. Auburn had a brief lead, and the damage has been done inside. Alabama's tough inside trio overwhelming their Auburn counterparts so far. In fact, Bama's done it from everywhere on the floor. They're also hitting four or five from three-point range. I think the choice has become simple. You either drop your guards off and make Alabama shoot it on the perimeter and really help out inside by jamming up the lane, or you look for a zone. But as you continue to pressure the ball out on the floor and play man inside, that's just a tremendous mismatch. I don't think there's any way they can solve that problem that way. What in the world has gotten into James Sanders? He has 11 first half points. He only averages seven a game and is a 34% shooter. Well, you get on those kinds of rolls, much like Dennison did yesterday. A guy gets it and gets it going. And uh, it's that feel it, deal it mentality. Battle with a couple of nice fakes. Got Askins away and then hit. Impressive series there for Ronnie Battle, his 11th point. I tell you, he is, uh, he's matured so much and has become such a polished offensive player that it's scary. Wrencher knocks it away from Sanders. Auburn trying to pick it up a notch defensively. They get out on the break, and then Arnold almost breaks the backboard with that one. Never looked at the rim. Saw the, saw the guy coming, concentrated on whether it was going to be a charge or a block shot. He never looked at the rim. Alabama has had seven blocks. Ori ready for the three. Spotted up. Couldn't hit it though. Gallon takes it on the fly. Here comes the Auburn break. Four on two. Battle. Goaltending called on Campbell. Credit the basket to Ronnie Battle as the Tigers ran the break to perfection that time. Well, they've got to get some of this. You know, here we've got a situation where they just look up. They've got numbers three on one. No question on the call, but they have to get some easy baskets. Right now, they're working too hard to score offensively, and they're expending too much energy defensively trying to shut down this inside game. They're just becoming fatigued with nothing to really show for it. Final 30 seconds of the first half. Bama will hold it for the final shot. Missed team. Good play. They had it set. Askins cut into the basket. That's the mismatch. they got to clear it in there for him. Ori from 16, bottoms it, and a foul. Well, here all they've been doing, and this is characteristic of what Ori did here, you see the stack on the lower left of your, of your screen, and all they're doing is running a guy off that stack, although Sanders in this particular situation elects to shoot the ball. But at stack, initially, the alignment that Auburn's in is preventing them from being able to play the guy either plays out into the corner or plays to the top of the key. Auburn has to make an adjustment defensively. Robert Ory with a three-point play. He has 14 in the first half. Auburn trying to get one final good shot. Four seconds left. Wrencher deals to Arnold, who's fouled by Waits with 3.2 seconds. Not a good foul. Not a good foul, but you know, in, in the same token, you've got Zane Arnold taking the ball to the basket, and we all know what he does free throw-wise. Uh, not a bad foul to give. I thought he was off balance, so I didn't think he was going to get a very good shot at it. Oh, I agree. I don't think that if you had it to do over again, uh, Wimp would want him to be fouled. But as we look at it here, depending upon what happens, uh, it, they, may, they may escape. He throw rattles through. I guess they called it on Ori instead of Waits. I thought it was Waits, but Robert Ori with his second. And Arnold hits two free throws. Ooh, I'll say. Auburn's hit seven of ten at the line. They're going to get a shot. Now Battle broke it up. He flings one the length of the court, not even close, but they did manage to disrupt the Alabama final second shot. Well, Wimp and Askins feel like they should have a foul, but realistically, it's just that that's a free ball and there's nobody at fault. Just a good play by Ronnie Battle. Wimp Sanderson not happy, even though he'll go to the locker room with a 41-29 lead. The defending Southeastern Conference Tournament champions trying to make it two in a row, trying to visit the championship game for the eighth time in the last 13 tournaments. They lead it 41-29. We're ready for halftime. Let's go to Bob Kessling. Thanks very much, Tom. Of course, uh, Tommy Joe Eagles, the Auburn coach, told us last night he was concerned about this very physical and very talented Alabama team. He thinks that physically the most talented team in the conference. 
However, their shooting today has been the key as Alabama has a lead, 41-29 at halftime. And of course, they're trying to win this game to advance to the championship game tomorrow against the Ole Miss Rebels. Ole Miss won earlier today against the Vanderbilt Commodores, 65-62. At halftime, we will check the SEC Players of the Year from Jefferson Pilot, also scores from other games around the country, statistics and highlights. All that coming up at halftime. Alabama leads Auburn at the SEC Tournament, 41-29. You're looking live at the Orlando Arena, Alabama on top of Auburn, 41-29 at halftime of our second SEC semifinal matchup. Yesterday it was announced by Jefferson Pilot Telecommunications that uh, we have reached an own agreement with the Southeastern Conference to cover SEC basketball over the country for the next five years. Associate Commissioner of the Conference, Mark Womack, is with us. Mark, it's an exciting announcement for JP and also for the SEC. It definitely is for the Southeastern Conference. We've had a great relationship with Jefferson Pilot over the years. And uh, we look forward to continuing that for the next five with a new syndicated package for SEC basketball. What about the impact of uh, college basketball now on television and how important is that to a conference like the SEC? Well, I think the biggest thing other than revenues that you generate for your programs are the exposure that you get and, and the help that that is in recruiting the student athletes that you need to be a competitive program. And uh, we've had great coverage with JP over the years and uh, we've developed a lot of good basketball players in the southeastern part of the country, and I think that helps keep them home. Well, the tournament this week in Orlando has been terrific. The folks have been great down here, and the tournament's run, gone very smoothly. It really has. It, it's been a great event, as it always is. Uh, we've had some terrific ball games down to the last second to see who wins or loses, and that's what makes a great tournament. But the people in Orlando have done a terrific job, and it has run very smooth. Mark, thanks a lot, and I know that the people at JP are very excited about the next five years, and so is the SEC. Well, as we are, and they're terrific people to work with and has been, and we look forward to a long-lasting relationship. Mark Womack, Associate Commissioner of the Southeastern Conference. Again, here at halftime, it's the Alabama Crimson Tide on top of Auburn, 41-29. We'll continue in just a moment. Halftime, Alabama on top by 12. If they win, they meet Ole Miss tomorrow for the SEC Championship Tournament. You know, it's been another great year of SEC basketball. Some of the best young players in the country are in the Southeastern Conference, and Tom Hammond and Bob Wotley now have a chance to look back on some of the better efforts of the year by the players. Okay, Bob, and uh, Coach Wotley, uh, people in your profession, head coaches, uh, make an assessment of talent for a living. As you spent the regular season and now the tournament in the Southeastern Conference, how do you assess the overall le level of talent in this league? As good as anybody in the country. Watching games on TV, there's no question, but that when you look at the Shaquille O'Neal's and the, and, and the Houston's, the Allen Houston's, and all the young players, this is a league of the future. We've had great seniors, but we have a league of the future with the new coaches. Who knows what's going to happen in the next three to five years? I think it's going to explode. Well, there is a good level of talent in the Southeastern Conference, but five stood out. Here are our Delta Players of the Year. Here are our Delta SEC Players of the Year, and they do love to fly. Last year's Player of the Year, LSU's amazing Chris Jackson returns, again with impressive numbers. For the second time in his two-year career, CJ led the SEC in scoring at nearly 29 a game, also was the top free throw shooter. And if Jackson at times had mysterious lapses, and if his numbers are down a bit, remember his role has changed some, and he suffers only in comparison to last season's incredible brilliance. A freshman on the All-SEC team, how can you ignore the sensational Allen Houston, who had Tennessee in the thick of the race? The conference's fourth leading scorer, Houston showed his ability against Jackson and LSU, recording 43 points and 11 assists. And the thing that had fans cheering was Houston's steady improvement. As the season wore on, he got better, his dad's best recruit. Another outstanding freshman was LSU's seven-foot man-child Shaquille O'Neal, who just turned 18 this week. It's difficult to imagine a rookie having a greater impact. A consistent inside scorer, O'Neal made his mark by leading the league in rebounds and block shots. In fact, he set a new SEC record with 100 rejections. Who ranked among the leaders in the most conference stat categories? Gerald Glass of Ole Miss who trailed only Jackson in scoring and was also world-class in the top 10 in rebounding, field goal percentage, three-point percentage, assists, block shots, and he led the league in steals. That's a complete player. Glass and Georgia's Alec Kessler are the only seniors on our team. Kessler is the quintessential student athlete. For the second time, chosen college basketball's academic player of the year. But academics aside, Kessler is a legitimate NBA first-rounder. 
He ranked third on the SEC scoring and rebounding list, leading Georgia to its first conference title. At 6'11", Kessler has the ability to post up, drive to the hoop, or shoot the outside shot. And he saved his best efforts for the Bulldogs' biggest games. Alec Kessler is our 1990 Southeastern Conference Player of the Year. Congratulations, Alec Kessler and all those other fine players. We'll check other college basketball going on around the country today. When we come back in just a moment, Alabama on top by 12 here in Orlando. Now it's time for the Budweiser scoreboard, brought to you by Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Shocker in the ACC, Virginia knocks off Clemson in the finals, 69-66. Well, in the semifinals, Duke is leading Georgia Tech right now in the first half. Also in the Big East, Connecticut shocks Georgetown, 65-60. In the Metro, Louisville has knocked off Southern Mississippi, 83-80. And it's Colorado knocking off Oklahoma State, 82-70. They beat Missouri yesterday, did the Buffaloes. And out in the Pac-10, UCLA leads Arizona State by seven. That's also in the first half. Here, it's Alabama on top of the Auburn Tigers, 41-29. This reminder that Ole Miss has already won. They won 65-62 earlier against Vanderbilt. Alabama trying to advance to the finals. We'll be back in just a moment. JP Sports exclusive coverage of the Pepsi SEC Game of the Week is brought to you by Pepsi Cola and your local Pepsi bottler. By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. For insurance and financial services, better call JP. By Bud Light, everything else is just a light. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Gillette and the revolutionary Gillette Sensor Shaving System. Gillette, the best a man can get. By Delta, the airline of SEC country. We love to fly, and it shows. By your local AgriCenter dealer. For your farm, your family, your piece of America, AgriCenter means more. And by Infinity, who invites you to test drive the Q45 sedan or M30 sports coupe. Yesterday, the Auburn Tigers fought from behind in the second half to beat LSU. They got a big hill to climb now. They're down to Alabama by 12. To see if they can come back, they call the action Tom Hammond and Bob Woodley. Bob, they do face an uphill battle as uh, Alabama played a near flawless first half. Only the play of Ronnie Battle actually kept Auburn within striking distance. Well, you get Derek Dennison in foul trouble. He only plays four minutes in the first half. So Battle comes on and picks up the slack and does a great job based on the fact that Alabama ran two different people at him, and Askins, as I mentioned earlier, is really a tough guy to play against. On the other end, the big guys shoot it well, and particularly Robert Orr. He can do that all night long. They've gotten shots in and out of the high post. Auburn's got to make an adjustment, whether it be zone or takeaway. By sagging inside, they've got to make an adjustment. Stats are very re revealing. I mean, Alabama has shot the ball well. They've rebounded the ball well. Uh, they've uh, taken care of the basketball. The points in the paint are amazing. Plus, Alabama has six block shots, which has been a problem for Auburn taking the ball to the basket. Individual scoring, really a surprise here in that battle is the leading scorer, but he got almost no help out of Kaler and Dennison, who had big games yesterday. And on the other side of it, if there is a surprise, it has to be in Sanders. That's gravy for Alabama when he comes up with 11, and all his shots were good shots. Second half ready to go, and Auburn's going to try to pull another come from behind tournament victory over a favorite opponent as they did against LSU. Derek Dennison is back in to start the second half and immediately misses the shot. And Alabama rebounds. Alabama has its starting five out there. Cheetah Mori, Benoit, Waits, and Sanders. And for Auburn, Dennison, Brant, Arnold, Gallon, and Battle. There's the man-to-man -man again. Good, good adjustment defensively by Zane Arnold in taking away the post, which they did not do in the first half. Arnold with a steal, so Auburn again with a chance to score the first two points of the second half. 41-29 Alabama in the opening minute of the second frame. Brandt penetrates. And the foul on Alabama. It's on Melvin Cheatham, and that's his third. Well, Alabama has the advantage in playing against Auburn in that Brandt they can play in behind. 
you know, he's not a big dominant player. They can play behind him, use their quickness and shot blocking ability to, to, to really stay out of trouble. As opposed to a larger guy who they can't afford to give the ball to, have to front, and then that guy gets inside rebounding position. Chris Brandt. Short on the free throw. He has only two points, averaging 12 a game. Much improved player this year, though. His dad is a professor at Auburn. Missed two, and Cheatham has the rebound. Well, Auburn's had two trips without scoring. They've got to start cutting into the lead because after you have played and the emotion has run its course, there's going to be some problems with their legs here as they get a little bit tired. They've got to be in striking range or it's going to make for a long afternoon. Robert Ory deals inside to Benoit. Good. Boy, their inside guys have good hands. They come up with the ball in traffic, and then they're so quick getting up over to shoot the basketball that you don't really get a chance to block shots. Dennison fires a three. No good. And the rebound to Alabama. Lost, though, by Sanders. Picked up by Arnold. He scored. Good, good scramble. That's the kind of play they have to come up with. They didn't get any of those in the first half. They've just got to manufacture and figure out ways to get the ball in the hole. They're not shooting it well. It's got to be out of offensive rebounds and loose balls. Two points apiece in the first two minutes of the second half. Cheatham in traffic, lost it, dribbled it off his foot. Here's Dennison. Ori knocks it away, and Sanders saves it, but Ori's standing out of bounds. Good effort, and it broke up the fast break. Well, they look like they may be playing the stack a little bit better, although Alabama is very, very quickly going to recognize, as we see here. Did you like that move? <laughs> Great move here and trying to come. Dennison just doesn't know they're coming up from behind. Ronnie Battle is short on that three-point attempt. Strong rebound by Look Ory. Deep. Askins. Pretty shot as he laid it off the glass. Great identification by the guard. Good lead pass. All Askins has to do is go up and complete the play. Askins just came in to replace Cheatham, who picked up three fouls, and immediately scores his eighth point. He also has six rebounds. Grant, baseline drive, draws a foul Ooh. from Robert Ory, and that's three on Ory. Big foul early in the second half. Well, his second, so I was wrong. Just the second foul on Ori, so I was off on one of those first half fouls. So no need to be alarmed if you're Wimp Sanderson. It would have been tough if his, two of his strong frontliners had picked up three. I knew you were going to make a mistake this year. Uh, I just yeah. wasn't sure when, and we got it to the last <laughs> game. That's pretty good. I'm just good at covering them up. <laughs> I just don't admit them. Grant hits two. Missed his first two, then hits two in a row. Pressure by Auburn. Bama beats it with ease. Benoit, short jumper, good. Tough team to press. Too much quickness. The big guys can complete plays at the end. One thing you got to think about if you press them is when the guard brings the ball down the floor, fan, make the guard complete your play because they struggle getting the ball in the hole. You can't let him dump it off and give the inside player a little eight foot jumper. There's another Alabama foul. They're continuing to mount up. That one on James Sanders, his second. That was on number 14 for Alabama. James Sanders, his second. Third. Get back, get back. Oh, he stepped out. Ronnie Battle gives it back to Gallon. They set it up. Auburn only hitting one of its first three field goals, and Bama still smoking. Four for four in the second half. Walk. There's a walking call on Derek Dennison, who still hasn't scored, coming off that 34-point performance against LSU. Seventh turnover committed by the Tigers. Reggie Gallon's going to have to start creating a little bit. I just don't sense that they're getting anything easy, and he's a guy that can penetrate, and I think set up some of their shooting. Battle has almost been a non-entity here to start the second half. They've not been able to find him. Gallon almost got it away from Waits, who took an angry swipe with an elbow, but fortunately didn't connect. Waits is one of those guys that kind of, you know, he just, he, when things don't go well, he doesn't react as favorably maybe as he should. Oh, great move. Sanders got the roll on the baseline drive. We're just talking about, it's just out and out speed. They're forcing it baseline, but there was no rotation inside. That's not the defensive player guarding him. Guarding Sanders' problem, it's there was no help side rotation. 
Alabama with its biggest lead. Dennison fakes, fires off balance. No good. Still pitching a shutout, Dennison, and Brandt on a rebounding foul has his third. Well, once again, here we see the stack. There's a pop out on the far side, which sets up the low post player. Nothing there, Sanders takes the ball. Baseline, no rotation inside. That's gotta be a charge or a block shot. Nobody got there. Alabama hitting 72% field goals for the game. Auburn only 34% against that withering Bama defense. Well, if you watched yesterday's game, I mean, it's very obvious the difference in terms of the four shots that Auburn's had to have simply because they're being guarded. There's nothing easy. Yesterday, of course, as LSU switched in and out of the zone and played position defense, it became maybe a little bit too easy for Auburn. Today, everything is a struggle. Well, Chris Haskins with a big grin on his face after he uh, faked Derek Dennison all the way into him, and Dennison picks up his third foul, and they've been three cheap ones. We'll be right back. Tom Hammond, Bob Weldick in Orlando. Bama leading 49-33. It's been a tough afternoon for Derek Dennison, who had 34 points yesterday and is scoreless today and in foul trouble with three. Well, you know, when you get out of the blocks poorly, a lot of times it's very difficult to turn around, and Alabama doesn't afford you the luxury of doing what you want to do to get it turned around. They're constantly pressuring and forcing you to do things you don't want to do. Point Alabama lead. But we repeat that Auburn came from 17 down to nip LSU yesterday, but that you made a great point. LSU doesn't play the kind of defense that Alabama plays. Well, in fact, their defense sometimes is non existent. It's only the two big guys back there swatting away shots. Well, you know, in, in, in defense to them, you know, the big guys make it difficult to come out on the floor and chase, but in the same token, you can channel the ball toward the big guys and then use them to intimidate and block shots. Ori stepped on the baseline. Bama turns it over for the 11th time. But it hasn't done much damage. Auburn unable to convert those turnovers to points. They almost lost that one. Fun teams are teams in the 6'5 to 6'8 range that are athletic because they give you so much versatility. And you look around the country, except for a team or two that has a dominant center, the really good teams are those teams. Well, there's some banging going on out there right now. Arnold and Askins just exchanged vicious elbows. Dennison still can't hit. Ori clears the rebound. Here's Robert Ori on the offensive. Got court. him. Guarded by Kaler. Kaler got a hand on him, but Benoit caught it anyway. And man, has he been strong down the stretch for Alabama. 51% shooter on the year, and that's his 10th point of this game. Well, as they spread you out, what they do is they put you in a position where if you try to take away the flash, then they lob going to the basket. Gallon's shot is too hard, but he goes somehow in there to get it. Falls away and still can't score. Gallon has only one point. And another rebound for Robert Ory. Alabama, six for six. They've hit their last six shots. They reeled off eight in a row at one point in the first half. Well, and to complete that thought, if you then play off of them to take away the lobber on the side of them, then they're going to they're going to flash the ball, catch it, and shoot it over you. So it's a tough match if you don't have any help. Oh, Sanders oh. has been unconscious today. 15 points for the normally low-scoring James Sanders. Hey, I see. What, what, they, what, what Wimp's got to be thinking right now is taking Sanders out, sending the hotel, and sticking him under a heat blanket and making sure that he doesn't cool off. <laughs> <laughs> Saving him for the finals. Well, here's uh, Ori and uh, Kaler and a little uh, fracas. And Robert Ori is guilty of his third foul. That's his third now, I'm sure of it. Checking in for Auburn Chris. Oh, yes, yes. For Alabama, Melvin Schiener. One looks like he's been to Dreamland in Tuscaloosa. <laughs> Here he's in Dreamland in Orlando. <laughs> Oh, Auburn's only hit one of its last eight shots. Make it one of nine. Make it one of ten. Finally, Dennison scores. Here they come. Quick break. Mm. Reach in foul. Larry Patrick. Well, I've been impressed with David Benoit's play today. Five for five from the field, four rebounds. 
Ten points for him total. Alabama's just been on fire. James Sanders, Bob has not missed a shot. He's seven for seven. Well, you know, what makes a team a great basketball team, you kind of know where they're going to go, and that's inside with the three big guys. But, but you don't know to what degree. You know, each guy steps up each night. One guy does it one night, one guy does it the next, and so it all averages out, but you just don't know which guy it's going to be. Chris Brandt just committed his fourth foul. And things are getting worse for Auburn with 13.04 left and the game about to become a rout. Well, and then you get the thing wired for those three guys. And of course, now all of a sudden, you know, Sanders goes crazy on you. We've had situations where we've seen, as was the case against Tennessee, where Waits hits a couple of big three-pointers. So it, that's what makes good teams great teams is when everybody contributes in their own way. Melvin Cheatham, as we mentioned, on the coaches All-SEC team and a second team choice, UPI and AP, out of Louisiana, where he was twice All-State. He's a broadcast major. He may be over here trying to get your job in the years to come. I don't think it'll be too hard. And Auburn turns it over as Brant makes a diving attempt. <laughs> I don't think, you know, that collectively si collective sigh of relief is his, knowing that he may have my job. You know, you've caught on pretty quickly this season. Here's Bama. Oh, Cheatham, I don't know how he caught it. Made a good save. Askins finally is fouled as three people reached in on him and Larry Patrick, his second personal. Well, I appreciate you saying that. It couldn't have been any more fun, but uh, is this where we fill? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you brought your notes uh, for the blowout because uh, Alabama is just about playing a perfect game. Well, you know, there, there's just times when we talked, and it was, it was addressed in the press conference, uh, and that's simply that you have teams that are not necessarily equal in ability, and you have to, uh-oh, uh-oh, now we're getting into physical stuff. They just need to get it stopped, you know, and get the thing cooled down. It's just not worth it with a 20-point lead. Bend some loose elbows and some things. And just, it would not probably hurt to put them to their benches. Technical put them to their benches and let them talk the thing over and cool it off a little bit. I don't know that that's necessarily, a technical is necessarily appropriate, but I just think I see Waits gathering his group over there and they need to kind of talk about it. It probably wouldn't hurt to have the Auburn players get together in front of their bench and visit about where do they want to head with the end of this season. Brant and Cheatham squared off. Uh, no damage done, but the technical foul and Dennison shoots for Auburn. Well, it's a possession play too. I think Alabama might have had the ball. Now you know you got the free, you got the the technical and and, and uh, possession play. So it's a swing. Not that it's that important right now. But what I was alluding to earlier was that you have teams that are better than other teams. And what you have to hope, as was the case yesterday with Auburn, is that one team doesn't play as well. That gives you a chance. That would, that's what makes basketball such, or any sport, the, the great games that, that they are. But on the other hand, there's Askins called for a foul. He doesn't like that call. But on the other hand, in this particular case, Alabama has elected not to play poorly. Well, here we just see it. There's, there's one of these where he goes, it's just basketball. I mean, Askins doesn't try to run over him. The contact is there. He, he, he dies on the contact. Try doesn't try to run through him. And Gallon hits a three. Gallon's first field goal of the game. And on the press, an Auburn foul. Larry Patrick has quickly picked up his third. I'm impressed with Larry Patrick. I like the way he's been able to come out and really kind of put move things up a notch. He's done a great job defensively. He's got good feet. You know, he's got to improve his offensive skills, but he'll stay after you. He's a guy that could be a defensive stopper for you. They like his socks. Well, are there any? <laughs> <laughs> guy looks like Mike Tyson. Askins feeds it in to Cheatham, flashes it right back out. Patrick, now four fouls. Those have all been in the space of a minute or so. I think Tommy will let him in and just play him out with the idea that if he gets his fifth, you know, he, he may go to another bench, another bench player. Uh, we'll see. Keith Askins at the free throw line. 
I'll tell you, when you have what I think is probably the best sixth man in the league on your team and you're already a solid defensive team, what makes him such a great sixth player is he can do everything at every position, but he gives you a lift. He adds a dimension to your basketball team. Doesn't just come in and replace a player, he makes things happen. And not only can he score, as he does in double figures, but plays defense. Uh, boy, what a great job he did on Chris Jackson, their two meetings this year. Well, Dennison let, launched one from three-point range that wasn't even close. He's gone. I mean, you know, to stand there and juke and juke and juke and then go up and shoot it like that, I promise you, if you're playing for Tommy Joe Eagles, your history on that play. Well, maybe he redeemed himself with a steal. He'll take it in against Askins. <laughs> and threw it to the other side of the basket. Here's Waits the other way. Four on two, Bama. Benoit's little soft jump shot won't go. Boy, that is so accurate. I mean, that's just a soft shot. Dennison. Well, he was determined he was going to keep shooting. That's his sixth point. Well, he sees the guy sitting over there, and he needs to get his licks in right now because as soon as there's a dead ball, he's not going to get a chance to shoot it again for a while. Auburn said only two of ten from three-point range. It seems like a 30-point basketball game, and you look up, and it's 14. Not anymore. <laughs> Correction. <laughs> Keith Askins has 12 points. Well, Alabama is just, you know, they're so relaxed in their play, and like I say, with a big score, the basket gets bigger. It's too easy for them. Taylor. Patrick off the glass. Patrick scored seven points in a reserve roll. Numbers. Brant just fouled out with that little body shot. Chris Brant fouls out with 10-13 left in the game. Well, that's really unfortunate. Here, of course, we talk numbers. Alabama had the numbers. Sanders makes a good move and goes around. I, it's not, you know, I'm not, I'm not, in, I'm not here to officiate. There's no really, really no reason to do that. You know, it speaks for itself, and let's go on with the game. What are you trying to say? I'm, I'm not trying to. Well, yeah, 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 well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but it isn't going to be about officiating right now. <laughs> Champ Rancher has come in to replace Brant. And Zane Arnold also returns for the Tigers. Chris Brandt told me back in uh, a game we had, the final regular season game against Georgia, that he and Neville Austin, who were high school teammates at Auburn High School, Austin the starting center for Georgia, were planning to get together uh, and come to Florida for a spring break. But uh, you know, Georgia may be playing for a while longer. Well, that's amazing. I, and, and, you know, if you'd asked him yesterday, I'm sure he'd have thought these guys might yeah. be playing a little bit longer. It's been an amazing story. And Two free throws by James Sanders. He scored 17. It's all Alabama. Back after a word from Pepsi. Tom Hammond, Bob Welling from the Orlando Arena, Alabama leading Auburn, 61-44, bidding to move into the finals to face the Ole Miss Rebels. Well, Orlando's a good place for the youngsters. A lot of them made the trip here to the SEC tournament. Speaking of the Magic Kingdom, Alabama has really had magical shooting this afternoon. Bob, in the second half, they're hitting 88%. For the game, 23 of 33, 70%. Meanwhile, look what their defense has done to Auburn. Well, eight, that 88% really sounds like a lot, but as you go back and look at a shot chart, they're, they're shots that, that college players are going to make. And, and of course, uh, Alabama's not normally a very good shooting team. No, and, but they have picked and choosed well. They've had the shooters shoot, and, uh, you know, they haven't got guys doing things that they can't do. Taylor with a good ball fake inside draws an Alabama foul. Well, it just is simply a case of Taylor gets the guy on the high side and does a great job of holding him off. Pump fake because he knows that Alabama's a shot blocking team, gets him off his feet, gets into him, and now he's on the line. Taylor's a very smart player. You know, I, you know that's obvious based on what he's done all year long and yesterday, but 
you know, just a very intelligent play inside. We'll be picking a golf most viable player from each team at the end of today's game. It's going to be a tough choice. A lot of heroes for the Crimson Tide today. There's one of them, James Sanders. It's going to be a charging foul on Sanders. Took a while to sort it out, but it'll be number two on... Number three on James Sanders. There we see it. Sanders brings the ball back to the middle. Battle riding him pretty good. Goes up. Looked like there might have been contact on the shot, but since there's no call on the shot, there's no question but that it was a charge. I think when the whistle initially blew, they thought that he was going to get a two-shot foul. John Taylor at the free throw line once again. John Taylor was quite an athlete in high school. You know, he was a high school track All-American. Set a Tennessee high school record by high jumping six foot ten. Well, it's hard to believe this is a 13 point game. I mean, it just, you sit there and it just looks like it's a 30 point game, but this is what happened yesterday to LSU. You'd look up and all of a sudden you realize that Auburn was kind of hanging around. As we mentioned before, though, the difference being that Alabama, because of their defensive play, really makes it difficult for you to make up 13 points. Cheatham from 15 is good. They've answered every challenge, what few there have been, any time that Auburn has cut into the lead. Uh, one of the big guys has made a basket from the free throw line. Taylor fakes and scores. He throws the defense with the repeated ball fakes and got the bucket. Well, he's right now, he's just a little bit too strong inside for him. He's done a great job of just using his body and bodying up. Waits has got it. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here watching Waits, and like there's not a trip goes by. Coaches are talking to him now. There's not a trip goes by that he doesn't get into some kind of an argument with some. He just has to play. You know, he just got to go out and play. In fact, they've taken him out of the game and let the officials officiate the game and play. You can't help your team if you're preoccupied with things that are going on other than the game of basketball. So I'm sure they're going to talk to him. And he's a great kid. He just he just gets himself worked up to a situation where he takes everything personal. Sanders bottoms the free throw, having one of his best offensive games of the season, shooting for his 19th point. to Rod Joyce in a hurry. Joyce too hard off the glass. Arnold had the offensive board and then an Alabama foul. See, that's a good job by Auburn, getting it in quick, getting it down, making sure that they have an opportunity to get an easy score. That's what we talked about earlier. You have to manufacture ways to score. And in this particular case, Alabama was very slow getting back. I, 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 I kind of sense that Alabama... And I don't think this is this is consciously, but they're kind of playing it out. And Relaxed a little bit. Yeah, and, and I just get the feeling that if push came to shove, they could stick this thing in another notch, move it up, and really bust it open. But they don't feel threatened, and as a result, they're just kind of playing, you know, tit for tat, and we'll see who ends up on top. And right now, they're in great position. Arnold hits one of two at the free throw line. And they, they had a lane violation, apparently, on the first, so he'll get another one. He missed the first one, but a lane violation, so it doesn't make any difference. He can't hit it anyway. Full court pressure from the Auburn Tigers. Sanders against Wrencher, now battled a double team on the trap. A oh, good move by Tommy Joe, because as soon as he saw Waits go out of the lineup and he knew that they were only playing with really one guard, one ball handling guard, and he went right after him. That's a great move. Uh, Fortunately for Alabama, Sanders answered the challenge and now knocks one in. Eight minutes left. Career high for Sanders. That time oh. for 21. <laughs> Champ Wrencher, the walk-on. Well, he was going to pass it, and there wasn't anybody to pass it to, so he passed it through the basket. 67-53. Again, Auburn hanging around in striking distance, even though 
the game has been very much in favor of Alabama in every category. Fellas on number three, number Jim Renter, his second. Reggie Yellen. Champ Wrencher has just committed his second foul, and James Sanders is Wrencher going out of the game as Gallon returns. Now we're inside the eight-minute mark, and I think right now, you know, we see Dennison and Gallon come back in. This is the last two raw when you've played and you're tired and you're coming off an emotional game. Auburn's going to get one more run at it or have an opportunity to make one more run at it, and if, in fact, they're not successful over the next four minutes, then you can put this in, in the bank, but they need to get their best players in to make a run. Sanders missed the free throw. One of the few things he's done wrong today. He's hit eight of nine from the field, four of five at the free throw line. Also has six assists. Arnold, power move inside, but no oh, good. Man. Crashing over on the rebound. Uh, I'm I'll tell you what, John, John Kaler, I love him. I love to watch him play, but he really does need to consider acting as a career because here is going to be a great one. If you'll watch this. Zane Arnold, of course, forces the ball in the glass, and there's some activity on the back side. But, I mean, you know, it's one of those where I'm, I'm come on now, James Sanders is going to give me a break on that one, John. And he kind of smiled about it. I just think he caught him off balance, but give me a break on that play. <laughs> oh. They got one of the biggest reactions of the day from the crowd when they replayed it on the scoreboard. I like the replays on the scoreboard, all right, but they need to put up, there's the, the uh, big screen high above the Orlando Arena, but they need to add who gets the foul because uh, the referee signal across the floor, we can't hear the public address announcer, and sometimes if there's a lot of traffic, you can't tell who the foul is on, and there's no indication on the scoreboard. Two free throws by Melvin Cheatham. It's a 69-53 Bama lead. We'll return after a word from Pepsi. Sixty-nine fifty-three, Alabama in front, 7.29 left. The winner moves on to the final game tomorrow afternoon to face the Ole Miss Rebels. Alabama, the highest seeded team remaining in the tournament. They were seeded second yesterday, as you know. The top seed Georgia was knocked out. The third seed LSU went by the boards at the hands of this Auburn team. But Alabama with a strong 15-point win over Mississippi State last night and leading here. Let's go to the ACC tournament second half. Duke leading Tech by four. And Kansas with a three-point lead early on Oklahoma in the Big Eight tournament. Where's Ronnie Battle been in the second half? He's been non-existent after picking up 13 points in the first half. He's not even in the game now. Well, he just has struggled, and I don't know if there's something that we don't know about, whether he's, you know, hurt himself. It didn't appear so, uh, but he just really was has been a non-factor in this second half. He's got 13 points in the first half and hasn't, hasn't shown, hasn't gotten anything in the second half, so that's hurt him. Alabama, which was last in the SEC in backcourt scoring, Waits and Sanders at 12 a game with 32 in this one. Askins is one of the members of that backcourt, if you count him, because uh, Waits hasn't scored, but Sanders and Askins have done the damage in the backcourt. Well, Alabama right now is thinking clock. They're inside of eight minutes. In fact, now they're inside of seven minutes, and they're thinking in terms of clock. Benoit a little short on that jump shot, but he waited in to get the rebound. He'll try again. Good! They've gotten to a point in the game where if they use the clock in every possession, it's going to be very difficult for Auburn to make a run. And uh, the clock now becomes Auburn's enemy. They've got to make a run. Ooh. Joyce fakes Cheatham but can't score. Benoit with a rebound. The announcers for this game, selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Tuttle Productions, this broadcast a copyright presentation. Any use of the broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot is prohibited. We have to be impressed with the way Alabama has played. I mean, you know, they just they just play. They get after you in every aspect. I mean, you know, you think you get the the, the dike plugged up on one end and a hole breaks loose in the other and. And defensively, you know everything you're going to do is you're going to have to work and 
You're going to get one crack at it if you're lucky. Uh, and it's probably going to be an altered shot the way they're playing today. So you have to be very impressed with their chances of winning the whole tournament. Auburn has actually outscored Alabama at the free throw line today. Auburn 17 of 23, Alabama 14 of 21, including that miss by Cheatham. And he gets the second one. There, li there likewise will be a point now where, where as the score remains this way, Wimp will have to make a decision on who's going to continue to play and how much they're going to get ready for tomorrow rest-wise. Alabama played in the quarterfinals, the final game last night, played past midnight, but it doesn't seem to have fatigued these guys at all. Wimp's been pretty relaxed for him throughout the day. There's Patrick with a three. Ten points off the Auburn bench for Larry Patrick. 72-58. This is what makes him tough to press, is you've got the big guys, particularly Ori, who's going to have a mismatch as far as handling the ball is concerned and bring it up. So that immediately defeats the press because your big guy can't press him. Tapped in by Cheatham. Taylor posting Benoit. Benoit over the top for the personal foul. Well, as has been the case, I think they were surprised Sanders finally missed a shot. Alabama guys have played with him long enough to know that's always possible. And, of course, there's a good follow-up there. But that's just, once again, a case of activity on the backboard. Auburn trying to reach around, shake the ball loose. They have no other choice. Alabama staying with their knitting and making the plays. John Kater is 6 for 6 at the free throw line. Arnold got a tap at it, but then Sanders picks it up. Got it spread out. You're going to see some back cuts. You're going to see some guys blowing to the basket. Uh, I just don't think that Auburn can play, uh, play them out on the floor. I don't think their quickness, particularly by their big guys, is such that it'll enable them to. Benoit, oh, Ori missed the jam attempt, but Benoit saves it for Bama. Every time Benoit and Zane Arnold get near each other, there's an arm flailing. Looks like Arnold is doing the talking and doing most of the bumping. Benoit is making him pay by scoring. Benoit scored 12, Arnold has nine. Kaler slaps it off Sanders. Good play by John Kaler. You can always depend on him to hustle. I remember the game against Ole Miss when he hyperextended his knee on a similar play. Well, he may be looking at his last game from what conversations he's had, but that's just a great individual effort. But I just don't see him playing any other way. I mean, there are guys that have that kind of makeup. And, like, they could be down 30 with two minutes to go, and he's going to make that play where a lot of other guys will elect not to. Here's James Sanders leaving the game, getting a good hand. Gary Waits has replaced him. Alabama hitting 73% of its shots in the second half. Auburn only 39. Dennison tried to follow that air ball through, and he couldn't do it, but it's touched by Ori, and Auburn will get it back. Yeah, Askins might, might have bumped his knee. I don't think it's anything serious, but he did bump his knee, or maybe he hurt his ankle. There's Keith Askins, a little shaken up on the play as we take a break. With 4.05 left, Alabama seems to be ticketed for the finals. How they accomplished this 74-58 lead today? Well, in the first half, they hit eight straight in a 16-5 run. Ori and Sanders have had big games. Sanders unexpectedly, and they've held Auburn to only 37% shooting. A complete game for the Crimson Tide. Offense and defense. Now we see the 2-3 zone. Which Gallon shoots over for three. Went right up over. Good pressure. Askins obviously uh, is able to continue, so that's something we'll watch. He's limping a little bit, but it doesn't appear to be anything that's going to be disabling to keep him from playing. Derek Dennison with his fourth foul. Alabama's also out-rebounded Auburn, 32-23. to Only four points, or actually six points, four fouls and six points for Dennison, who scored 34 yesterday. The Alabama pick, kind of, it's really funny. Wimp just went down. I don't know what he said to him, but he was as serious as he could be. And all those guys that kind of, as, they, as he walks by, they're all kind of, oh, yeah, sure. They're kind of chuckling. But, uh, <laughs> and he, boy, he couldn't be any more serious. We remember some of your games at Ole Miss when the 
As you'd walk down the bench, a couple of guys were snickering. I yeah. don't know what it was about. Well, I tell you. We didn't have a lot of times that we could snicker. Benoit got the pass right underneath and got the roll in. He's got to start looking at substitutions, I think, uh, just to make sure nothing unforeseen happens here in the last three and a half. Uh, and also to give some guys some playing time. But, but you know, Wimp's funny. I mean, you talk to him, and particularly Auburn, he understands there's a lot of people that get involved in rivalries because of the newness of it they don't understand but we've been around long enough to understand what the auburn alabama rivalry is all about he's been 30 years at all at alabama with uh, 20 years as an assistant and 10 as the head coach cheatham answers dennison too and also a foul as cheatham laid it in well when we did the tennessee game and they were getting after after losing here we just see this is once again where auburn has to extend themselves you can see gallon I think they're just tired. They're not recovering. It's becoming much too easy for, for Alabama. And uh, Kaler seems to have hurt his shoulder. Richard Smith returns for Auburn. That's the right shoulder, the one in which he suffered the blood clot last year that made him miss the entire season. And if you missed it earlier, John Kaler is considering not returning for his senior season in the wake of the death of Hank Gathers of Loyola Marymount. He's afraid to endanger his health. Could be life-threatening. And he takes a blood thinning medication. Well, there's competitors and there's participants. John Kaler's a competitor. And, and, and a lot of guys are not. They're participants. They play at a pace and when the game is going their way. But he plays for the four, full 40 regardless of the score. Foul underneath. Kaler uh, set to be married when the season is over. What I was going to say, though, is when we were doing the Tennessee game and after the... Uh, uh, they didn't play particularly well against Tennessee, but they were getting ready then Alabama to go to Auburn, and Auburn was playing extremely well at that time. Wimp, 10 minutes after the game, was already bemoaning the fact that they were going to go down to Auburn and really struggle, and that's really unfortunate, whatever that looks like for John Kaler. Well, there's a portrait of a courageous young man. We've told you about the story, and with an ice pack now on that right shoulder. But injured or not, he uh, gives it his all every time he steps on the court. We've come to expect that from John Kaler, a junior out of Talbot, Tennessee. We'll take a break now and hear from your local SEC station. Alabama they will have gone to a postseason tournament nine out of ten and eight of those NCAA well and he's averaging over 20 wins 20 wins a, a season he already surpassed CM Newton in two less years in the total number of wins and he, he just has had really a magnificent career since he's been here and you have to figure in there he had the one disastrous year what two years ago uh, so the other ones even become more amazing He's been twice SEC Coach of the Year. He was the Basketball Times National Coach of the Year in 1987. The Lexington Herald leader voted him the Southeastern Conference Coach of the Decade for the 80s. And his seven NCAA tournament appearances, about to be eight, are more than all the other Alabama coaches combined. Dennison with a steal. He's closing out his career. Oh! <laughs> We've reached a point now where we've got a tee. Tommy, and, I, and I, once again, he's venting his frustration. It was such a high yesterday. And the thing about a tournament is that you can turn around and with a matter of hours, you can kind of go from the penthouse to the outhouse. And unfortunately, it's been a real struggle for him today. And I just think, you know, it's been a battle all day long. And he's just, I think, venting his frustration. And I can really feel for him because the Auburn team is a much better team than they have shown today. And I hope this won't detract from what he and his team has been able to accomplish this season. Well, he already was co-coach of the year in one of the polls with Hugh Durham of Georgia for the job he did during the regular season. And everyone expected Auburn to be the doormat of the league. And they wound up being the sixth seed in this tournament. 
In fact, we're playing at home against the league champion Georgia in the final regular season game with a chance to be 500 in the league. Yeah, they just, uh, they've really had an amazing season and he's had, you know, even, he just has really stayed with it and he's a competitor and, I, you know, and his kids reflect that and he's not going to go down easy and particularly to their arch rival. And of course, uh, as we've been saying, Dennison is the only senior on that club. Taylor's return in question, but a very young team led by Battle and Gallon, who are freshmen. I just, you know, I, I just really think right now that they've got to get the Ories and the Cheatham's and guys like that out of the game, and I'm sure he's going to do that because the one thing you don't want to do is risk that unforeseen problem can arise from a kid dunking the ball or getting hurt or getting undercut or whatever it might be. You know Auburn's got a foul. So it's best to get, you know, those players out and also give your other players a chance to get some tournament experience because you never know what's going to happen in the next game. In case you've been detecting a hiss in the background, it's for the snake, Ernest Brown. Oh! Campbell! Woo! Campbell! You're allowed to smile, son. Whip knows this is in the bank. You can smile. Patrick puts in the air ball. Off the miss by Battle. Well, Ronnie Battle has been missing in the second half. 13 first half points, zero. A goose egg in the second half. Well, here we're going to see it. There's the follow by Cheatham. And then the, oh, man, has he come on. And I'll tell you what's funny. Is, is there anything funnier than watching kids rag other kids? I mean, you know, those guys are all really giving him the business, and I say he, he wants to smile. He's not sure if he's supposed to, but it, it's really funny to watch, and it's nice to see. Let's take a look at our golf MVPs for the game. John Kaler for his courage and all-around hustling play as our golf MVP. Also partly, I guess, because, because Dennison had 34 points. He was the MVP yesterday, though Kaler hit the game-winning shot. So a little carryover for John Kaler in perhaps his final college game. And James Sanders, who had the game of his life today, James Sanders winds up uh, on the afternoon with a career-high equaling 21 points. He had 8 of 10 from the field, 4 of 5 at the line, had 2 rebounds and 6 assists. Here's Kaler, our Auburn MVP, and James Sanders with the best game of his career, our Alabama golf MVP. Hey, I tell you, you're Ed Murphy, and you're scouting the game, and you're figuring on stopping these three guys because there's most of the games the guards haven't shown up, and all of a sudden Sanders pulls this on you, and now you're saying, are you kidding me? i got to worry about another guy? Down to the final minute of play in the semifinal round of the Southeastern Conference Tournament. It'll be Alabama and Ole Miss for the championship tomorrow. To the winner goes an automatic NCAA tournament bid. Alabama seems a cinch for the tourney anyway. Should Ole Miss win, that'll really scramble the uh, picture. And it's something that's been happening in conference tournaments all around the nation. A lot of underdogs winning. It's going to make the selection very tough. Oh, really tough. And, and realistically, it's the only way that Ole Miss can go to a tournament, period. The NIT has already indicated they will not take less than a 500 team. Obviously, the NCAA would not consider them, but they can get in with a tournament championship, and there's no question but that Alabama will be there, I think. So if all, uh, Ole Miss wins the championship, they'll go, and then you have to figure Alabama, LSU, and uh, Georgia. And Georgia will also go. That would be four teams in. If Bama wins, as expected tomorrow, they'll be the favorite. Does that mean the SEC is only going to get three teams? Yeah, I don't think there's any other way, Tom. You know, Tennessee was the outside chance for somebody else winning the tournament. Tennessee gets eliminated in the first game and is sitting there 15 and 13. There's just too many teams out there that have played in leagues with that record or teams that have 22-23 wins. I just don't think that they can at this point consider Tennessee. So if Ole Miss wins, four teams in the big tournament probably for the SEC. If Alabama wins, likely only three. Well, I think Dale Brown made an interesting point. Hey, nobody's called him yet. You know, uh, I think they're in. But when you lose two of your last three to Florida and also to Auburn, uh, you know, you don't sleep as well as you would. But you can't refute the fact that they had the big wins. The Loyola, Maramont, the UNLV. Uh, they played well in the league. They won 20-plus games. I just can't imagine they wouldn't be in it. But sometimes they play without emotion. They have to be one of the most underachieving teams in college basketball. What's the problem? I don't know. I think a lot of it's just inexperience. I think they just right now, you know, they don't have a great chemistry. I said at the beginning of the year that the loss of Ricky Blanton 
would be very difficult to overcome. You know, we talked early, and uh, it, it's one of those deals where you can't just go up to a guy and touch him on the shoulder in front of the rest of the team and say, okay, son, you're our leader. They don't have seniors. They don't have a logical guy. Chris Jackson, as good as he is, is only a sophomore and is going through a lot of things, I'm sure. So it's just a lot of different things. And, you know, they can be as good as anybody in the league. And I'm sure with this time off, they'll have an opportunity to sit and talk. And, you know, you just have to hope that Dale can get the thing turned around. But it still comes down to where it's the player's call. They got to sort it out. Well, we had an intentional foul called, and Richard Smith hits one of two. 14 seconds left in the game. We're just playing out the string here. Alabama's on the way to the championship game, and let's talk about the Crimson Tide's chances in the NCAA tournament while you see the credits. And by the way, a tip of the hat, this grueling tournament is really tough for those people in the truck. Jimmy Rayburn, our executive producer based in Charlotte. Quay Sistar and Roger Roebuck have been with us all season long calling the shots in the truck. Ken Neal's been our assistant producer and our stats whiz. Dave Burchett, the director for most of our games throughout the season, doing his normal fine job. Boy Goodwin has been with us throughout the year. And again, these folks make our job pretty easy and they don't get enough credit. Gil Heron and Suzanne LaCroix on the graphics. And uh, thanks from us who are sitting out front to all of you behind the scenes for carrying through another good season of SEC basketball. Well, I, you know, I second that, but I also want to thank you, Tom, and, and Marty, and the other people that I've worked with, because as the rookie on this thing, you've made my job a lot easier, I can assure you. Well, you caught on pretty quickly, as we said earlier, and you've been a lot of fun to work with and with some very incisive analysis. I don't know whether you want to coach again or whether you want to do TV, but I'd say you're pretty well qualified for either job. We're going to put up a number here pretty soon to keep me <laughs> off food stamps. Hopefully it'll be one of those 900 numbers so we can collect a little on it. <laughs> and the game comes to an end. Alabama will face Ole Miss in the championship game. And I asked you a moment ago, we never got a chance to finish it. Talk to me just a few moments about Alabama against Ole Miss in the championship game and then the Crimson Tide in the NCAA tournament. Well, I think first off, you've got to look at Alabama's ability to play on the defensive end. The constant, you know, you're getting a little bit tired. You may not shoot it quite as well. Maybe you don't throw it up, but you know, you're not, you're just not as sharp. Uh, you may be a step slow offensively as we saw today with Vanderbilt. I thought it was very difficult for them late to rebound the ball. So that defense becomes a real constant. And we know that Alabama has been the defense, best defensive team in the league. On the other hand, though, you have a team that may be destined for destiny in Ole Miss. Gerald Flass can carry a team. He can make all the big plays. He does the things that have to be done. Didn't have a particularly great game today, but made all the plays down the stretch. And I think they're very confident with the change in the lineup. Patrick Eddy has I, just been sensational, but Tim Jumper will be sorely tested at that point position tomorrow with these two guys guarding him. And of course, as Alabama moves to the championship game and after that to the NCAA tournament, that great defense could carry them quite a ways and that'll be uh, one of the key factors to their success in the entire postseason. So it's, it's Ole Miss and Alabama in the championship game tomorrow and yes, that is a rare thing, but a thing of beauty, a smile on the face of Wimp Sanderson. He's in the finals again. 87-71 the final score. This is Tom Hammond for Bob Weldick and our entire crew saying so long from Orlando. You've been watching J.P. Sports exclusive coverage of SEC basketball.